So the principles, I think, behind orgasmic meditation are to really generate a lot of love and eros energy within the relationship and not to have it be orgasm focused at all, but to learn about your touching your body and your spouse's body and how to receive pleasure and how to give pleasure and how to pour into one another just really wonderful, loving energy. Welcome to the Get Your Marriage On podcast. I'm your host, Dan Purcell, a Christian marriage and intimacy expert and coach. I'm on a mission to help couples have the best sex and most emotionally intimate marriages possible. Our episodes cover topics you've always wondered about and are packed with practical advice designed to help you take your marriage to the next level. I believe sex is a very powerful language. Just think, an immense amount of information is communicated between two people in any sexual interaction. On one hand, this is what makes sex in a marriage so bonding, beautiful, blissful, and transcendent. On the other hand, this is why sexual abuse is so painful and ugly. I've been pondering what my wife and I communicate to each other during our intimate interactions. Last year, my wife and I read the book Replenish by Tammy Hill. Among other things, this book describes a practice called orgasmic meditation. We went away for a weekend last fall and decided to give it a try. It was amazing for us because it made sex so much more about a meaningful connection and communication between us rather than just rushing to orgasm. We like the orgasmic meditation practice so much that it's become a regular routine in our marriage bed for several months now. I wanted to do a podcast episode about it, and Tammy Hill, who is a marriage and family therapist and a sex therapist and author of the book I just mentioned, she kindly agreed to come on my podcast as a guest. This is a real treat for me to have her here and to share her immense wisdom with me, and I'm so glad that you can listen in. Last weekend was our annual marriage retreat. It was an incredible experience for myself to interact with 20 couples, our guests, and see so many ahas and epiphanies. I witness hearts changed, hope regained, and couples walking away hand in hand with big smiles on their faces. I'm grateful for the new friends I gained last weekend, and I hope you'll join me for our next retreat. Our retreats are nothing like anything else out there. It's a combination of fun, romance, instruction, coaching, and people realizing they're not alone in their struggles, while walking away equipped with practical tools to improve the quality of their marriage far beyond just a weekend of the retreat. You can join the waiting list so you know right when our next retreat is going to be announced by going to getyourmarriageon.com and clicking Couples Retreat. I sincerely appreciate your reviews of the podcast. Here's a review that came in recently. This woman says, I appreciate the wisdom Dan and his guests share on this podcast. He has some very knowledgeable and insightful guests and I've learned a lot. Thank you for that review. If you'll just pause this episode right now and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, it will help spread the word about this very important work of helping couples develop deeper intimacy in their relationship. In addition, if I read your review in a future episode, you can email me at support at getyourmarriageon.com and I'll mail you a gift as a thank you. Now, let's go meet Tammy Hill and learn her story on how slow sex and orgasmic meditation changed her life. Tammy, welcome back to the Get Your Marriage On podcast. How are you today? Thank you, Dan. I'm doing great. Got a little bit, getting up cold, so I sound kind of rough, but I'm doing great. Very good. Yeah, I think you'll be just fine. So I know a little bit about you, Tammy. There was a season in your life where you had chronic back pain, and it was awful. And you hated how it interrupted, you know, you and your husband getting together sexually. Tell me about that time, and what did you do about it? Yeah, that was a hard time. I, um, for about two years, I was postponing back surgery because I was terrified of back surgery and what they were going to need to do. And I was in so much pain that having regular sexual relationship with my husband was super uncomfortable and not pleasant. And so at that point in my life and in my career, I started really researching something about how to enjoy sex with chronic pain. And that is when I learned about flow sex or tantric sex. I was particularly interested in the work of Diana Richardson. And I think I purchased every one of her books. And then Jeff and I, my husband, 
went to one of her workshops in uh, Switzerland for a week. That was super fun. And it's really through her work that I learned this whole new way to look at sex in the Western world. You know, we've talked about this before. It's all about focus on orgasm. We get into bed and we've got our little mental checklist that if I do this, this is going to happen. And then this is going to, you know, and you, it's linear. And um, that isn't how tantric sex or slow sex is at all. It is, it's very circular and three-dimensional, like you said, and it's just so much deeper and more meaningful than just focusing on an orgasm. And I've just loved the practice of tantric sex in my own life. I think I, I, I know I just talked about this on your podcast before. I don't know if I said the same analogy, but for me, honestly, it was like a whole new wing of my house was opened up. If I know what I, my home, I've lived here for 17 years. I know every little inch of it. And then one day I'm cleaning and I open up a door I've never seen before and there's a whole new house. And that's how tantric sex has been for me. It's so bit, it's been so expensive. That is so good. And I, I hope everyone listening follows your example of always seeking learning, always seeking like new and growth. And that's the great thing about our work of, you know, as a husband with my wife, Emily, we're always trying to grow sexually. And we'll be doing that till the day we die, I hope. Like, there's always more to learn. Mm -hmm, so you're in Switzerland with your husband at this special retreat with this guru, you mm -hmm. know, Diana Richardson. And I'm assuming you're there with other couples, too, maybe a dozen or so other couples. Never. You're at a retreat center. 30 or something. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so you'd meet for some instruction and then you'd have plenty of time to go back to your uh, bungalow or whatever to practice and yes. come back. And what's one of the practices that you learned while you were there that you want to teach us today? While we were there, we learned about orgasmic meditation. And so that... I love the sound of that. <laughs> it's such a wonderful way to practice. And so I guess I could give you a little bit of a an idea of what the principles are behind it, and then maybe a little step-by-step -step tutorial of how to start practicing it. Does that sound good? Yes. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So the principles, I think, behind orgasmic meditation are to really generate a lot of love and eros energy within the relationship and not to have it be orgasm-focused at all, but to learn about your touching your body and your spouse's body and how to receive pleasure and how to give pleasure and how to pour into one another just really wonderful, loving energy. And so it really is freeing. So the, I guess an underlying principle is that it's very freeing. You don't have to have an orgasm. You can totally have a wonderful lovemaking experience without any penetration or orgasm taking place at all. And it can really be fulfilling in this new way that I've learned. And so um, with orgasmic <clears throat> meditation, basically, I've adapted it a little bit from what I learned from Diana. But the way that my husband and I do it is we alternate days doing this. And we usually do it for a six-day period. And during that six-day period, we decide together to kind of not have orgasm, either one of us, during that time but that we're just going to focus our energy on this type of making love. And so if it's my day to give, then on this day with my husband, Jeff, I would do some massage and then I would focus in on his genitals for about 12 minutes, roughly, where I'm touching him. It's all tactile. It's not oral sex. It's all tactile and touching and stroking him. And when he gets close to orgasm, he will like tap out somehow or let me know. And so then I can cool it off. And it's really good to keep him just kind of in that cool zone where he's not going to go over the orgasm threshold. Um, but he's certainly staying in the aroused threshold, right? And then you kind of, after 10 minutes, you give a little signal. I give a signal and let him know. It's got two more minutes. It's kind of nice to have a signal so you're not just all of a sudden done. And then at the end of that two minutes, I um, snugly pressed on his penis and testicles and just 
push kind of the energy back into his body as best as I can. I know that might sound weird, but it makes sense once you start doing it and you feel the energy kind of coming in. And so when we orgasm, we're expanding sexual energy, where it's great, it's a wonderful thing, but it, it takes energy from us and removes it from us. And this way, you're retaining that sexual energy and that retention um, brings about a, a lot of vitality. And it's almost mm-hmm. like by the end of the week, it's like we're in that engagement phase again when we were choosing to wait to have sex until we were married. And you're so excited to be together and there's so much sexual energy. And so that's kind of what it does is it helps us rebuild and reboot kind of that sexual energy. Then the next day, it's his turn to do the same with me. And we go back and forth alternating and kind of just retaining all of that energy. One thing that I've expanded on is more of a spiritual kind of dimension with this is that while you're touching your spouse is to be really thinking of all the ways that you love this person and um, reflect in your mind ways that this person has blessed your life and some of the significant things you've shared together where you've grown. You know, there's just so many things in marriage as a team where you're, you know, you have babies, you get up with babies, you're with sick kids, you work through school, you get a mortgage. I mean, you're just working so much together and to reflect on some of the work you've done together that is so holy. I think that's holy work laboring to raise a family and provide for a family and pouring that that thinking into my touch. And it's like uh, you mentioned this before. I've heard you say this before, Dan, where it's like you're pouring a pitcher of water into a cup. And as you pour out, you're giving and this cup is receiving. And it's a real cycle of giving and receiving this loving energy to one another. And it makes it so that while you're touching your spouse and massaging them, it's about your love for them and you're helping them receive that love for them. You're not mentally going through a checklist of what I'm going to do as soon as I'm done with this. You know, you're really focusing your meditation and that mental energy into expressing the love you feel in your heart and in your soul for this person through your loving touch. And um, and then kind of encapsulating that within the body proper to have that held on to until there's a time down the road when you choose to release some of it with, the, with an orgasm. And it's, it's just a beautiful process. To me, it is giving and receiving love in probably one of the most fundamental ways that husbands and wives can do this. And yet, in the Western world, we never learn to do this. We we are always focused on getting through, you know, that once orgasms happen, we're done, right? We're, we're a right. Lot, well, unfortunately, once a husband ejaculates, we're done. And, and that's not what it is at all. Right, right. On that, you ask a couple, how do you know when sex is over? And 90% of the time, the answer is, well, when he had, when he ejaculated. Right. And this kind of flips that script. Like there's a different approach here. And it's about pouring love into another person. It is. I love the way you said it. I think that's exactly what it is. Pouring love into one another. And there's no pressure. You really take having Western sex off the table the whole time that you're practicing this. And so there's not pressure. You know, it's going to take, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It's not going to be a real long thing that you have to plan for so much. It's just a really beautiful recharging, rebooting kind of experience that that can really vitalize your relationship. That's great. You said a few things in that that I have questions on that I think our listeners might have questions on too. You talked about this is a way of cultivating more Eros energy in your life. If someone hasn't heard that term Eros energy, can you describe that? Yeah. Eros energy, of course, that goes back to Eros and mythology mythology being the, I don't know, the God of, he's not a God of love, right? And so it's this energy that we have that's very creative. It's that when you feel alive inside and when you're excited about doing things, when you're passionate about something and you have maybe flow type experiences where you are so engrossed in what you're doing that time just goes by so quickly. It's a 
It's an expansive creative energy that you feel doing different things that you're passionate about. I feel this a lot in, in making love. I feel this a lot when I paint. I feel this sometimes when I write. And so there are just each one of us have different gifts that come naturally to us. And I think when we exercise those gifts or things that we're really excited about, we have an extra amount of energy and excitement about it. And that's how I define Daryl's energy. Very how would good. you define Very good. it? Dad? I like that. I would use that. And maybe just to add on to that, sometimes we understand a term better by looking at its opposite. So if eros is, you know, literally in Greek, it means desire. The opposite of eros is thanatos, which is the death instinct. So thanatos energy would be curling up in a dark corner and pulling a blanket over your head. <laughs> like yeah. It's about closing up and closing in. And eros is the opposite. So it's expansive. It draws you out. Like you said, it's that creative life force. It puts the pep in your step and the smile on your face. And it makes life worth living. So right. having a practice like this designed to fill you with this sexual energy, which is very vital, it's, it's almost spiritual. We're talking in spiritual terms. I don't, I don't mean in a sacrilegious way at all, but no. it's spiritual in the term that it's, it's connecting. It connects us to a higher source. It draws us and fills us with this desire for life and for goodness. And for I love. love I love the way you said that. I agree 100. percent And it's hard to kind of describe it, but you know when you feel it, you know. Oh, this is this elevated goodness. It's just goodness and energy that you have for what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. Another thing I've noticed as you were talking, and I find this a little ironic, is the practice is called orgasmic meditation, but the goal isn't orgasm. So, can you explain the difference between? living orgasmically and having an orgasm? Yes, it's a lot goes back to It's that. a little confusing because you're using the same root word, but it's a very different outcome. Right. Um, and it is all about that arrow's energy we were just talking about that when, we, when we're building up and, um, and I don't want people to think I don't love orgasming. I think orgasms are wonderful. And I think they're an important part of how we're created and to enjoy that. But it's not all it. It's not everything. There's this other side of the coin. It's one coin. It's all Eros energy. And one half of it heads, we're going to orgasm. And maybe on tails, it's going to be more orgasmic. And that's more the retention of the sexual energy, like I described, when you're kind of pushing that energy back into the body after you've been in that uh, between the arousal and the orgasmic threshold for 10 minutes, 12 minutes, there's a lot of mm -hmm. energy that you're just having and you're wanting desperately to, to go ahead and have an orgasm because that's kind of how your brains are wired. Our brains are wired that way here. But to kind of cool off and then build up and cool up, that's energy you've got and you're pressing that back into the body and it totally revitalizes you. I love when my husband and I choose to do this because I know I'm going to be the most productive. I'm going to be so much happier. I'm going to be, there's just so much goodness that can come from retaining that energy and then using that energy for the goodness and, and blessing of your family and others around you. And then we always love to say, okay, after this six day period's over where we're not having an orgasm, then, then we can do whatever. And sometimes we choose to expand it even longer and other times we're ready to go ahead and have orgasm and that good old Western sex again. Mm -hmm. That's good. I've been on like a getaway weekend with my wife. Oh, fun. And we've, we've decided in the beginning, we're going to have a lot of sex, but we're not going to orgasm until the very end. And it's a challenge for me. It is. <laughs> but it's a fun challenge. And, and, and it's, it's a game almost. But the whole weekend long, we're like Twitter paid it the entire time because yes. you're right. When you do orgasm, it is that release of that sexual energy. It's flushed from you. And uh, I think the French, uh, like a uh, idiomatic phrase they use for orgasm is the little death in okay. French, because, it, you know, it's like 
Christmas Day. All leading up to Christmas, you've been excited because of the lights and the caroling and the treats and the presents. And then Christmas Day is kind of a downer. Yeah. Right? It's kind of a disappointment because it's over. But that's yeah. what orgasm is. So on our weekend getaways, once in a while, we'll agree in advance. Like, we're going to prolong this and stretch this out as long as we can to enjoy that build up phase yeah. over a long period of time. Because that build up is really great. That's that's what I call being orgasmic, is having that nice eros energy that you feel so much when you're falling in love. As you're touching your spouse in the orgasmic meditation practice, you talked a lot about like how you take it to kind of a spiritual level. It's not just about physical arousal. Can I arouse him or her physically without going over the edge, so to speak? But there's this element of putting your heart and your soul into your touch. Can you talk more on why that type of touch is a powerful language when even words aren't sufficient? Yeah. Well, you're asking me to say something that words aren't sufficient for. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh -huh. But, but I, I think it is like we talked about Eros energy being expansive and creative. It feels expansive. In those times when it's almost like I'm praying over my husband while I'm touching him or he's praying over me while he's touching me and it becomes a somewhat of an ethereal type of an experience where you're connecting together in this really intimate way and it feels like we're connecting with heaven at the same time and there's a conduit that just pours out goodness and forgiveness and generosity towards one another, uh, an increased loyalty that we feel for one another. It just does so much to strengthen our relationship when we take time to do this type of making love, this orgasmic meditations with the spiritual dimension included in it. To me, is replenishing. And I um, that's what the name of my book is, Replenish. I think it is what restores the energy to our lives so that we have the energy we need to take care of all the responsibilities you have when you have a family. And I know that I'm so grateful for learning this from Diana Richardson and then doing it through my own work and being really prayerful in what I'm learning and what I'm teaching is to add the spiritual kind of conduit information to it. And it feels like we're living more true to our capabilities. We're being more true to ourselves and we're fortifying our relationship in a really deep but passionate way. I think it's what Replenish is, is all about. I love that. That is so good. That's so good. One thing I like about you, Tammy, is in all your material, in your Instagram posts, in your book and everything, you talk about how sex is at its root a relational experience. It's about two people connecting together. Yet the world seems to want to do away with the whole relational side of things. And that's, that's a really important distinction that sex isn't just a physical experience, or although it can be. Sex is not just a recreational experience, although it can be also. But it's, it's rooted in this context of a relationship. Is there any research that you've come across lately that kind of reinforces that concept that sex is really relational, not just for hookups or something like that? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was just reading last week about some new research by Dr. Laurie Minns. I really appreciate her work. She wrote the book, Becoming Cliterate, and she's got a, done a lot of work for women, sexuality particularly. And the orgasm gap is something that heterosexual couples typically have an issue with at times. Statistically, a heterosexual male will have an orgasm and ejaculation 95% of the time, usually all of the time when he's having sex. A heterosexual female will orgasm about 68% of the time. So right there, we've got a big gap about, you know, a good 20. 30% at least. Uh -huh. At 20 to 30%. And so that's a difference. And I think that's something a lot of people need to be aware of. Couples need to be aware of. Men need to be aware of that. This isn't just for your needs to be met. Your wife has needs to be met as well. But what Dr. Men's new re latest research, just this very year, 2024, 
is that in hookup relationships, again, in heterosexual hookup relationships, men will have 95% of the time will have an orgasm ejaculation, but women in hookup relationships, only 10% of the time actually orgasm. Look at that difference, 85% difference. And I find that, first of all, I find that really fascinating because I do believe that sex is intended to be shared in a relationship, in a committed relationship. Personally, for me, I believe it's intended to be shared in a marriage relationship where you're choosing each other and you're creating a life together. And this is just a good aspect of what you can create in this life together and bring you so much joy and happiness. So it's really intended to be relational. And then the second thing is I want to say to all, anyone listening or who may listen to this or find those stats is that hookups don't serve women. They don't serve women at all. And I I'm not 100% sure all of the reasons why women are choosing to go ahead and hook up. I know there are many, but I do know that the research is saying it's not fortifying you and filling you or helping you with your own sexual pleasure. And so that I thought that was really interesting research. Sad, because our yes, culture, like sad. you said, is all about hookup. It's all about mm-hmm. whatever, whoever we meet or whatever is we're both consenting adults, whatever happens is fine. And and that really isn't the case for women particularly. I like that. Very good. Where can people go to learn more about you, your excellent seminars you put on, your Instagram, your book, your email list, all that good stuff? Thank you, Dan. My email is Tammy at TammyHill.com. I am on Instagram at Tammy underscore Hill underscore LMFT for licensed marriage and family therapist. I did publish a book on sexuality called Replenish, Creating Sexual Fulfillment in Marriage that I published last year. And Dan, you were at the book launch. It was so fun. Yes, it the- was so fun. That was over a year ago. Can't believe I it. I can't believe that. So I'm super excited. It sold over 18,000 copies right now. And I'm just really grateful that so many people are being blessed. Um, sexually in their relationships, because I think we're designed to have more joy than we know how to, to claim sometimes. I do do making love retreats. That's one of my favorite things to do. And I have some retreats that I do. I used to do some European retreats, but this year I'm just going to stay in the U.S. I think it's been a lot of, I think that'll be better for, for me as I get a little older. So anyway, that's how you can find me. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, or even comment below and go see what other wonderful videos we have that will help you strengthen your marriage intimately.